G'day there and welcome to another Garage Hydroponics update. It's been two weeks since my last update and things have progressed a little since then. First, look what happens when you leave the pack toy alone for two weeks. It just gets massive. But not everything's going so well. This basil that I gave a hard cut back last time is struggling to bounce back. And these coriander seedlings aren't looking terrible, but they're not looking great either. This discoloration in the leaves had already kind of started in the propagation system. Um, so I think that's just a continuation of that. I don't think they're getting any worse. The new growth on the inside that's come up since we put it in the system seems to be pretty healthy. And I'm not actually seeing a lot of signs of that dieback problem I was getting. Maybe that's because I've been blasting the whole system with this oscillating pedestal fan. A few people suggested that the crinkling in my chili leaves might be due to a lack of airflow. But I've got plenty of air flowing now and I'm not really seeing any change in the crinkling of the chili leaves, but the chilies are going pretty well. Well, mostly anyway. I mean, this was the biggest, bushiest plant and the top leaves are still kind of folding like that. I'm not sure what that is, but this plant here is actually getting little fruits. Look at the little chilies in there and all of the chilies have got loads of little flowers on them. There are a couple of chili plants that were put in the system uh, a few weeks after the others and they're obviously a lot smaller but you can see the leaves at the top of this smaller one there they're a bit yellow or they're not as they're certainly not the same deep green as all the rest of the leaves. I'm not sure what that is and, and even over here on this more established chili the leaves at the top don't seem to have the same deep green color that the others had. And I wonder what that is. Is that because I haven't been particularly picky about my nutrients? I just bought what the hydro shop sold me. This is what's in the nutrients. And if you've got any thoughts on what might be going wrong here, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Should I perhaps transition across to this nutrient, which has this mix? I probably just need to do a bit of research myself, but the other question I have is, Am I okay using the same nutrients on my chilies up top as my leafy greens down the bottom? An important consideration because the whole system runs off the same res, of course. Now, down here in the propagation system, I've got some little bok choy seeds that I planted two weeks ago, and they are bok choy. I made sure I knew what I was planting this time. Um, and I've got these basil seedlings, which I think are long overdue for a transplant. The wasabi rocket that lives in here permanently has uh, bounced back since the last cutback and is now probably needing another cutback. Let's just take a little peek under here to see what all the roots are doing. Uh, there's good amounts of roots on the basil. The wasabi rocket's been in there a long time, so it's got thick mats of roots. Uh, one of those little bok choy has put a single little root down there, only two weeks old. And, uh, and we've actually got this leftover coriander in here. Uh, it looks like it's been a bit overshadowed by everything else, but it's got a few roots poking through there as well. So I think the job for today is to get those basil out of there and get them into the big system. And I think given that these basil plants are the only original plants left in the system, it might be time for them to come out, given that it looks like they're struggling to bounce back a little bit. Although they are, if I give them a bit more time, they'll probably be okay. But I think I'm gonna take them out. I think I'll be taking out a lot of that pack choy as well. Maybe I'll start by just stripping a heap of leaves off, leaving the interiors behind and seeing if we can get another spray of growth for the next week. I haven't quite made up my mind on that yet. Anyways, that's a short update. If you're interested in finding out more about my garage NFT, check out my second story build video or my original system rundown. I'll put the links in the description. Hit like if you enjoyed the video and keep watching if you want to follow along as I transplant the basil and cut back the bok choy and just run a few other routine maintenance tasks. So now that I've got these rails out and I can have a proper look in the pak choy, I can see that it's all starting to flower. This one's just got the start. So does this one, they're all starting to flower. So I think I'm gonna actually just cut those off and we'll have those stir fried with garlic for dinner tonight. As I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna take these basil out 
These are the only original plants left in the system and over that time they've been amazingly productive. But I think they're starting to look a bit worse for wear, probably all the hard cutbacks I keep doing. So I might just swap those two rails over and we'll get the pack toy done first. So there's the five pack toy plants and uh, there must be two or three kilos there. Uh, we're going to the neighbours for dinner tonight and she's going to stir fry them with garlic. There should be plenty to go around there I think. Now I never really get sick of this. This is the bit where I pull the roots out of the channel and they all come out in one continuous mat. Look at that. So you can see how these stumps just grow out of this, what was originally a rock wool cube and it puts down this mat of roots that runs right down the channel and covers the bottom. That's all sitting in the nutrient film, but then you've got these more wispy kind of roots around the top. They're not sitting in the nutrient film. They're the air roots and plants roots need air as well. That's why when you plant plants in the dirt, it needs to be well aerated soil. Um, these plants down here are all sitting in a in a coating of, of liquid so the plant puts out these wispy little roots into the air which just helps the roots breathe. Anyway that's all very interesting but uh, they're going in the bin. I'll give that rail a good wash now with a peroxide solution uh, and I don't actually have anything to put in that yet because the bok choy seedlings I've got in the propagator aren't ready for transplanting yet but let's get on to dealing with this basil. So I'm going to start by pulling these, these foam blocks out. Those are bits of packaging that I cut into blocks and I used as kind of a, instead of a pool noodle, similar kind of stuff. And I think I'll just cut them off. So the coriander roots shouldn't be too extensive yet and I cut the basil roots off about here two weeks ago. So this, I'm hoping this mat of roots here will just pull out without any disturbance to the coriander, but let's give it a go. Yeah. Yeah, that should come out fine. So while we're stuffing around here with this channel, let's just check in on the coriander roots. And you can see, look, they're doing okay. They're not going nuts yet, but they've only been in there for two weeks. And like I said before, I think they've had a little bit of trouble getting started, but they seem to be getting started now. Um, we'll see how they progress over the next few weeks. Now I'll whack this propagator out of here. Now let's see what we've got going on in here. This wasabi rocket is going gangbusters. That one's gone to flower. Uh, I'll probably just shear those back and let them grow back like they always do. But these are the basil seedlings I've got in here. They've probably been in there too long, but they're not looking too bad. Um, so we'll move those into the, into the rail that we just cleared. And there they are in. That rail's ready to go back in the system. Right, so I now find myself in a position where I actually don't have very much to put into the system. So I haven't very, been very organised with my seed planting, so half the bottom level is going to be empty now. So what I'm going to do is plant a whole lot of seeds in my propagation system here. And I think this is Arby Rocket, it's time to go. Right, so I've taken the wasabi rocket out of the propagation system and now I'm going to plant a bunch of new seeds. I think I'm going to go with basil, parsley, coriander, and I might get some more bok choy rolling through. Those, what, six, maybe seven if, if this one picks up, um, those are probably a couple of weeks off going into the big system. And the seeds I'm planting today, they're going to be 
at least four weeks before they can go into the big system. So level one is gonna be a little bit empty for a little while. I really wasn't very organized about it. But at least before that next round of seeds comes up, I should be able to cut holes in these rails that I never got around to cutting the holes in when I put them together. And within a month or so, hopefully we've got a whole new batch of seedlings ready to fill this bottom level. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut these, uh, these cubes into individual pieces. So I'm probably going to do about five of each, so I will just soak these rock wool cubes in water. Then we'll just plug them into the holes in the propagator. Then I'll plug these open holes just with a little bit of foam packing so that no light can get into the res. And finally we drop in the seeds. All right, so there's the new seeds planted. I'm gonna move the lid away so I can check the reservoir, maybe top it up and adjust the pH. The first thing we'll do, we might just check the EC of that water. 1.3, that's more than strong enough for freshly planted seeds. Arguably they don't need any nutrient in the water while they're seeds, uh, not until they get their true leaves. Um, and then they need a little bit and 1.3 should be plenty strong enough, if not too strong. And we've got a pH of 7.4, which is a bit high. I think I'll adjust that down to probably around 5.5. Right, I added two mils of phosphoric acid and we're at 5.6, which is close enough for me. Now back on with the lid and then back onto the rack. Now, I obviously didn't think this through very well because the humidity dome that I was gonna put on the top doesn't fit in the gap. So I'm gonna have to think of something to do about that. But I think that might be a problem for next week. All right, we might just leave it like that for now and I'll find a solution next weekend. Anyway, that's it for this week's Garage NFT Maintenance. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see updates on how these seeds grow. Thanks for watching. Hydroponics.